Hi everyone. Uh, today, me, Ashok Tarushanyan, and Sergey Giyakosyan <coughs> are going to be talking about our uh, capstone project, which is modeling, simulating, and prototyping well-known mechanisms. Uh, we picked six uh, mechanisms and modeled them in a 3D modeling software, SolidWorks, uh, and prototyped them using a 3D printing software and a 3D printer. So our main motivation for this project was to uh, have a physical and visual representation of uh, different con physics concepts that we learned uh, during our classes. In my opinion, this would be uh, really helpful for the students, as it would be for us too. Uh, and uh, also we think that it is very important to have uh, a visual representation of the applications of the concept uh, in this simple mechanism so that it can be projected to more complex ones that we use in real life every day. Uh, so the final product of this uh, project is this uh, stand right here, as you can see, that includes all six mechanisms, uh, as well as their pictures and uh, the description of their motion next to them. Uh, but this is not the only deliverable. There are also, we have also uploaded all the uh, files publicly to a GitHub repository that will be shared with all the students that want to experience the same, uh, that, uh, the same journey. Uh, uh, and uh, now uh, we're going to go through every mechanism one by one. Yeah, so our starting with the first mechanism, you can see right here. So this is a rocker lever mechanism with the rotating disc. Uh, so as you can see from the diagram, so uh, we have two, two cranks, this one and four. Uh, the crank one is rotating uh, evenly around the fixed axis. And uh, there is also the guiding fixed piston five, uh, which is uh, moving in the rails of the rod two. Uh, and the main uh, property of this mechanism is that this uh, P4 is uh, rotating <coughs> unevenly on the disc and uh, it's going uh, to the inner and outer radius of the uh, disc through these rails. So the main uh, applications of this mechanism are the windshield wiper, pump jack and quick return mechanism. These are just some examples. There are uh, a lot of applications for this. and. Uh, as you can see from the from these two pictures, so here is the path of the crank one, and here is the path of crank four. As you can see, uh, the crank four is not making a uniform circular motion. And here on the graphs, uh, you can see that the uh, the velocity along the y-axis, which is the upwards axis, and the velocity oh, this is the for the pin four. So uh, and the velocity along the z-axis, which is uh, along the mechanism's main part. And it, as you can see, it is not uniform and uh, Maximum velocity is achieved uh, in y axis is achieved uh, in this part uh, of the movement, and uh, during, uh, along the z direction uh, during the bottom and the top part of the disc. Um, so going to the next mechanism, it's the mechanism of the anti-parallelogram uh, with trailed road and slide. Uh, this is also a piston mechanism. Uh, it uh, needs to satisfy some conditions uh, like AD equals DC and BC equals AD. Uh, right here, as you can see, AD, CD, BD, and AD, uh, thus creating the anti-parallelogram ABCD. Uh, the, there are two main uh, roads, CD and uh, AD, as mentioned, and the lower one <coughs> rotates uh, 360 degrees, while the upper one only does 180 de uh, degree rotation. Um, this is uh, done to make the piston move unevenly, which is basically the application of this mechanism. Uh, the roads are connected uh, with the solid road BC, which also uh, makes the uh, piston move unevenly. Uh, this mechanism has uh, this uh, claw looking uh, parts at the point uh, G and H, uh, which uh, is used to uh, uh, limit the motion of the road BC. Uh, however, in our implementation, we used uh, this uh, motion limiters right here and right here, as you can see, to limit the motion of the uh, upper road uh, to make the piston move unevenly. Uh, this is, by the way, our uh, modeling of the mechanism in SOLIDWORKS, and some of the applications of such mechanism can be two-stroke engines or scroll compressors, basically anything that, uh, any technology that uses pumps. Um, uh, and uh, we also extracted the path of the uh, roads that I mentioned uh, from SOLIDWORKS and you can see uh, the full circle rotation and the half circle rotation uh, as well as from the graphs uh, you, uh, of the piston 
they show the velocity of the piston, you can see that the velocity is not uniform, um, uh, meaning that the piston does move unevenly, and uh, the highest velocity is uh, achieved when the piston is uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, the, uh, the reason why uh, this gap is so long is uh, we made it so that it's possible uh, for the piston to do the motion in the reverse direction. We would just need to pit, uh, put the piston uh, in the right part. So uh, the next mechanism uh, is the crank slider hammer mechanism A uh, with the elastic link. So as, as you can see from the diagram, uh, the crank one is revolving around the fixed axis A and the slider two, which is also the hammer, is, uh, is going uh, up and down in the fixed guides A, AA, here, and uh, they are connected with the uh, elastic link three. So elastic link here uh, plays a role of uh, suspension so that uh, if, if, the, if this part would be solid, the mechanism would break if the object here, for example, would be too big. But in this way, uh, we are preventing from doing that. So the main application of this uh, mechanism uh, are the dynamic analysis and testing of different materials and structures uh, so that the impact load can be applied uh, on the objects and the results can be measured. Uh, also, uh, a great way to optimize this uh, mechanism uh, is to use the piezoelectric actuators, which would uh, convert the uh, electrical impulses into the deformations, and it would change the uh, property uh, of the elastic link, and uh, it would change the, the kind of measurements that we get from when the impact load is applied on different objects. Uh, the next mechanism is very similar to the previous one called crank slider hammer mechanism B with an elastic link. Uh, this has all the same applications as the previous mechanism. This is the previous one and this is the one I'm talking about right now. Uh, the main difference is that the elastic link is different. In the previous one it's a uh, spring and in this one is this is a um, thin flexible sheet metal. Um, uh, we wanted to include uh, both of the mechanism to showcase the different types of elastic links. So the next mechanism uh, right here. Uh, so this is the punching cam machine, uh, which uh, you can see there is a cam here uh, with uh, pro two profiles AA, uh, and it's ro rotating around the fixed axis, and it's moving up uh, the pin C, which is connected uh, rigidly with uh, this part. Uh, which is uh, the rod one and also the hammer at the bottom. So uh, yeah, this mechanism is used to convert the, uh, the rotating motion into the linear motion. And in our case, the linear motion is used to, uh, again, either to punch or stamp or f uh, to deformate objects underneath. So yeah, and these are the applications. Uh, so some of them are like stamping uh, machine that may be used to stamp badges or coins. And the uh, forming mechanism that can uh, deform uh, any object that is uh, located underneath. Uh, and the sixth mechanism is called three link cam mechanism of punching hammer. Um, in this mechanism, cam one, which is right here, and uh, this uh, part right here, rotates around the fixed axis A and uh, pushes the roller five down, uh, which makes the main road three go up and down and puncture the product that uh, is put underneath it. Uh, it can be metal or non-metal. Uh, we added a spring to the main road three uh, to make it go back up uh, after the uh, cam one uh, is not in touch with the roller anymore. The, uh, the main road will just go up and wait for the cam to come back and push it down again and uh, thus complete the cycle. Uh, uh, applications of these mechanisms can be in uh, automotive engines, textile machinery. Uh, the mechanism itself looks like a sewing machine. Um, and uh, that's mainly it about the mechanism themselves. Uh, talking about uh, the physical environment, uh, the stand is planned to uh, be put in uh, one of uh, AVA labs uh, to be showcased for the uh, students, current students, and uh, future. Uh, uh, they are the mechanism and the stand is uh, planned to perform uh, under uh, normal conditions and should not be damaged uh, in room temperature with a uh, normal appliance to it. Uh, however, students uh, are encouraged not to apply excessive amount of pressure to the mechanism to avoid breakage. Um, however, they can uh, guide with one hand to uh, put at the mechanism and do the motion so that 
the mechanism doesn't bend or uh, it's used, uh, we use the double uh, sided tape uh, to tape it down to the stand so that it doesn't break or anything. Uh, and some potential issues uh, with the 3D printed parts uh, yeah, is the accuracy of their design. So uh, since the 3D printing the technology is working in a way of uh, depositing the layers of uh, material uh, on top of each other, uh, this may cause some parts to uh, warp or to be misaligned. Uh, and uh, yeah, this can lead to bad performance or mechanism failure. Uh, and also, uh, it, it is, uh, because of that, it is uh, a bit difficult to uh, produce the 3D printed parts with the uh, tight tolerance. Uh, we actually had this problem uh, during the printing and assembling that uh, the offsets that we made uh, were not enough. And uh, we, it is led to some amount of physical work needed to be done uh, with the 3D printed parts so that they can uh, fit into each other. Uh, so this is mainly it. Uh, as we mentioned uh, before that, uh, every file that we use uh, for our modeling is uploaded publicly to GitHub. Everyone can have access to it. Uh, we can uh, provide the link and everything uh, so that students can uh, reprint the parts again and uh, or look at the models and uh, get acquainted with them more. Uh, thank you very much. If I would do a science museum, I would buy these from you guys yeah. and probably order more. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea, and this is, the mes this is a message to the next cohorts of engineering students. If they want to continue, there is a big plan, and there are I scientists who are interested. that would be interested to get those and maybe mm -hmm. to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, just questions to the students. To Sorry. Question. <laughs> uh, one question. Uh, yeah. Do you think this size and this setup that you have made can be actually motorized with small motors so that you can, like visually, you can press a button and you can start moving and you see how it works rather than manually doing it. Or it will not work because of the, like all the problems that you mentioned with the 3D printing materials. Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, actually we, uh, there, there was an idea initially to have the motors also with it. Uh, but yeah, as we mentioned, uh, with, the, with the 3D printed parts, it's, it's a bit, uh, uh, mm because of the high friction and uh, well, be between the parts, it's pretty hard to do that. Uh, but yeah, I think we uh, had the plan issue, we just, uh, uh, yeah. If I could just do a follow up comment. So somewhere in between a real motor and real parts on one extreme and on the other extreme, a lot of text and eloquent presentation. There's probably a place in a presentation like this for a video or an animation or something. So you don't have to explain point A to point B, rotate, move up, move picture. I mean, just a, some, what are those videos that are worth a thousand pictures or so? Uh, the words, of, right? I mean, something to shorten so you can get to the substance more to just show, think this is a perfect uh, topic to, to, to do it, some kind of demonstration. And if a real demonstration is or the challenging for those reasons, I bet you could even find a stock video of, of any of these things working. Yeah, it actually, we yeah we actually animated them in the so in SolidWorks, but yeah, it, mm. uh, it just didn't. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. No, but the, all the all the files are there. So the yeah. in the first mechanics, when you were showing the first one, mm -hmm. you there was a slide telling about the applications. I think you missed for the others, or there were very few. Mm -hmm. so no, we didn't. Uh, uh, it was very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, maybe yes. I didn't. I was not. Uh, some I didn't saw that slide. Or maybe you just was fast. No, that's very important. It's, it's, like, yeah, it's mentioned no, there. There it was. Yeah. No, I mean here. No, it was here too. In the, for, uh, maybe we went uh, through briefly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, one of them is kind of a follow-up question of uh, the previous ones. So as a, as a rough estimation, based on what you learned throughout this project, what would you say, which mechanism out of the six would break, break down the first? have the shortest lifespan <laughs> and which one would last the longest the longest lifespan uh, th this one the first one would definitely last the longest because uh, it, as you can see is the biggest one uh, with the dimensions uh, comparatively uh, this was our first try uh, and as you can see somewhere here we super glued it together because uh, the components were too big for the printer to print in one go uh, that's why we just super glued them together on two goes uh, so this would last the longest uh, I believe this would break uh, first if it had to break, uh, <laughs> because uh, the you know the parts are uh, miniature and I believe more fragile than others. But if we're talking about applying like excessive amount of force, I believe if we added a spring here, which there is an opportunity because this mechanism can be deassembled and we can add a spring and yeah, usually in the diagram it was like that, but. Yes, with repeated parts, it was not quite possible. So we yes. assemble it back, and if the spring has a lot of stiffness, when we when we will do this uh, for the mechanism to work, I believe uh, this does have some sh threshold after which it will That's break. Good. It's really good that you guys have an impression. If you want to do more tests to have more um, quantitative analysis of it, it's really good that you know where to start from. Um, my second question is regarding the acceleration and the velocity graphs. What's the message you're trying to tell me by showing those graphs? Like, or let me rephrase the question. If you remove those graphs, what would I be missing? What kind of information I would be missing? Uh, with those graphs, we try to uh, prove that uh, the mechanism, the motion that we tried to achieve, uh, we did achieve with the, uh, for example, with the uneven, uh, unevenly moving piston, is we try to show that the piston indeed does move uh, unevenly. When, uh, and in the real life, we did achieve that motion as well, uh, and in the 3D modeling uh, software. Yeah, but you could tell me the same information as you just did with writing text. So what's the, for example, what's the difference if you remove that graph and explain this in a single sentence? Okay. So why showing it in a graph? That, that's what I want to know. No, I, I, I think that uh, it, for the mechanism, the way we showed the graph uh, is just visually even in the SOLIDWORKS, it's not quite visible, uh, the concept that we are trying to represent. Mm -hmm. That's why we included it there again, like to, pr to prove that actually mm -hmm. it's like that. Because in other mechanisms, it's like not, nothing to show that, no, that is not visible. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Nice. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Hi. Okay.